Hey guys, it's Chanel Rose. Today is gonna be one of those days that I sit down and just talk to you guys about my opinions or thoughts on music. And so the topic for today is going to be AJR's recent album, OK Orchestra, which I had very high hopes for. And while it didn't quite live up to my expectations, there were some songs on that album that I really, really loved and some songs on that album that I did not love so much. And I've touched on this a little bit before, but with this video, I really wanted to just dive into the album, give my thoughts on each one of the songs and then rank them in terms of which were my favorite and which were my least favorite. Now, those of you who know me already or have watched some of my videos in the past know that my 13th favorite, so I guess my least favorite song on the album, is The Trick. Um, this actually was a lot of people's least favorites, but also I've heard that a lot of people enjoy this song as well. Um, my main reason, which is probably one of the more obvious ones, is the use of the high-pitched voice at the beginning, and I guess during the middle of the song as well. Not really my thing. Um, the, the high-pitched shakiness and just, it just made me a little uncomfortable. I didn't really enjoy that song too much. Um, and, and that's one thing that AJR is pretty liberal with, um, you know, with their use of distorted vocals and particularly with this album, the higher pitched vocals, which you can hear in the background of a lot of the songs on this album. Uh, with this song in particular though, they they really went for it. They, they went all out with this voice. They didn't, you know, layer any other regular um, vocals over it. They just went ahead and used it wasn't really my thing. In terms of the instrumental, I thought the instrumental was pretty solid and the melody line um, for the chorus was actually pretty alright um, as a standalone um, kind of section. It, it st stood fine in my opinion, I, I enjoyed it. Um, lyrically, I wish that the lyrics would have been a little more figurative and um, descriptive in the sense that you have to kind of dig for the meaning because while the song itself has a pretty deep meaning, I would say, um, you know, speaking in in the way that like the, the high-pitched voice is supposed to resemble uh, who he is when he's lying and when he's speaking normal he's not. It's a, it's a really cool concept but I, I wish that the lyrics wouldn't have been so straightforward so that you really would have had to dig or it's something a little more I guess more with figurative language in it would have been a little more interesting for the song so uh, those reasons but mainly the high-pitched voice is why that song's gonna have to rank at the bottom for me. Number 12 on this list which is gonna surprise a lot of people but it's World Smells Violin and clearly AJR thought this was one of the better songs on OK Orchestra because it was the second song on the album to get a music video not in terms of the singles that came out first, obviously, but by the time the album released, we got OK Overture, and then immediately after, pretty much, we got The World Smiles Violin. I might get a lot of hate for this because I know a lot of people really, really love this song, um, but to me, it just kind of sounded more like a pity party for himself, and I'm not really a fan of that kind of content, I guess. And and the lyrics were just kind of like, oh, boo-hoo, like, I, it wasn't really my favorite song to listen to on the album. I will say that the chord progression is uh, spectacular. I love um, one spectacular night, <laughs> but I I love how the, it really carries on with this kind of bounciness to it and the lyrics, um, you know, about therapy and connecting with that. Uh, not too bad in my opinion, but overall the whole theme of the song it just um, gave me a general feeling of like I'm not a fan of when people try to bring pity to themselves, and I'm not saying that's what they're doing, but it's what it sounded like. So. Uh, for that reason, World Smiles Violin would have to rank right by the trick with that. Number 11 on this list is going to be Humpty Dumpty. Now, I remember the very first time I heard this song, and the way it started, um, which actually I got a little bit of a teaser because I listened to OK Overture first, and so you can hear the Humpty Dumpty and, and so like the lines in that, so I kind of assumed that was gonna be from the song Humpty Dumpty, and um, I was right. <laughs> and so. The, the very beginning line, and I guess it goes on throughout the rest of the song, but the Humpty Dumpty went Humpty Dumpty went Humpty Dumpty went down. Uh, first listen was not a fan. It, it was a little too repetitive for me, which I know is weird because repetition is good when you're writing songs and you want to have a good amount of repetition so that a song is catchy enough. But I think the lyrics, like the fact that it was um, using a nursery rhyme and Humpty Dumpty doesn't seem to roll on the tongue that well, it doesn't just come off as that catchy, came across as a little bit like borderline cringy for me and I uh, wasn't too big of a, a fan of that. AJR actually mentioned that the lyrics before they had written that part yet but they had the 
the original voice recording was I keep running and I keep running and I actually thought that sounded a lot better than their take on using like Humpty Dumpty um, and I wish they would have used that because I wouldn't have really realized the repetition so much in there it just wasn't really my thing and I, I will say that the part right before the chorus like the I got friends in a lot of weird play and then you can hear like the inst instrumental building up in the background I really do enjoy that part um, and and the chorus is fine um, you also again have that high-pitched voice in the background when it, it like switches to that instrumental kind of portion right after the chorus and um, again I <laughs> didn't quite enjoy that too much but Hey, that's why Humpty Dumpty is not that high on my list. Quick little note, just bear with me here. I know it sounds like I'm absolutely ripping on AJR right now. I just want to say I do not hate on AJR and a lot of you guys might be surprised because I don't talk about my opinions on AJR the band too much. I more like touch on their music um, and the things I do like about it. So this might come across as a little bit shocking to a lot of you, but um, I, I don't think there's a problem with you know, liking a band and pointing out the things that you don't quite enjoy about their music. I'm not saying that they're bad songwriters, bad musicians, whatever. I think they do a great job and they put a lot of effort into this album, but some of the songs really didn't stick for me and comparing this album to Neo Theater, um, I, I guess I was a little disappointed because I had really high hopes for OK Orchestra and the singles that were released before um, the album's release kind of gave me a little too high of hopes that I was let down when I initially listened to the album. Number 10 on this list is Joe. A lot of people like Joe. And I, I will say that it's, it's a cool concept, especially instrumentally. The beatboxing sounds pretty cool over the, I guess, I don't really know what to call it, the Mozart slash like Tchaikovsky kind of piano vibes that it has thrown in at the beginning and at the end. And it was a lot of fun to learn on piano, so I did enjoy that. However, um, this song, like lyrically, when I first listened to it, sounded a little bit petty. And it was kind of that vibe that World Smallest Violin gave me, where I didn't quite enjoy listening to the lyrics as much because I was like, okay, like, um, it sounds like you're just hating on this dude and you're saying like, oh, he's gonna look at me now, like, look where I am now, am I good enough for you yet? Now, I know what you guys are probably typing in the comments right now, and that is that AJR mentioned in their live stream that that song was not meant to sound petty or this, like, go get Joe kind of song, because Joe is actually representative of that person that you look up to and is kind of that role model that you can't really quite get their attention and they kind of just look the other way or um, don't care too much about you. And so I understand that that song isn't really about what I initially thought it was, but to me that's still what it sounds like, even though I know it's not true. Um, and so that, that's just like the first impression I got of the song. That being said, the rest of the song, um, I guess the other elements of the song instrumentally, like I mentioned, are pretty cool. There's just, again, that high-pitched voice, um, the dee 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 Not uh, my favorite, and it's, they keep using it. <laughs> and I. I don't know if other people enjoy it, um, I mean I'm sure there are people out there who enjoy it, people who are watching this video that enjoy it, but uh, not really my favorite thing to throw into a song or to listen to, so that's just my opinion. In the ninth spot we have OK Overture, and I just want to say, we know OK Orchestra is a kind of weird out there album. It's very out there, it's very experimental. They tried a lot of new things with this album. And I think we see this a lot in OK Overture because when I first listened to it, it said, here are our drums, da -da -da -da. this is our melody. That whole speaking voice in there, I thought was a little too out there for me. I didn't, I just didn't think it fit very well into an overture. Now, I really liked how uh, the production of this song, like, mesh together all the songs like it's very seamless and especially watching the music video it's absolutely phenomenal like the goosebumps you get when you're watching it everything is um what's the word so together i don't know it's, it's blended together so well and that song is probably their best overture yet in terms of production i i really like how they they put you can tell they put a lot of effort into sneaking little hints of songs and not just making it as simple as their past overtures that being said unfortunately the just the whole that song gave more airtime airtime i guess to songs that i wasn't that big of a fan of and less 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 airtime to songs that 
I really, really, really liked off the album. So for that reason, I just wasn't that fun to listen to, in my opinion. Yeah. Number eight on this list is Ordinary Ish People. And this is one of my songs that's just like, meh, like I like it and it's it's a good song. I wouldn't say that I hate it. Um, when I first played this song, it <laughs> my sister thought it was a remix of the national anthem, like the US na national anthem. So I thought that was funny. Um, but yeah, it gives major marching band vibes. Obviously you have the whole, um, I guess, orchestral and you can hear the brass section in it too. And so it's like, it sounds like a marching band. What else can you say? I really, 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 really like the melody in the verse. Like the dun 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 dun. Yeah, I, um, so good. I It just has a nice upbeat, kind of like storytelling kind of vibe. And I, I really do like that. I know I use the word vibe a lot. Um, for lack of a better word, I, I mean, I don't know. I say the word vibe, but I enjoy, I enjoy the feel of that song and really how it carries itself as the song goes on. Um, it's just very fun to listen to. However, like the trick, I would say the lyrics are a little more on the simple side. I really like the message of the song and of course not all of these songs are meant to be super in depth and have like lyrics that you're supposed to dig into and try to pull the meaning of it because sometimes songs are just going to be very surface level and they're going to hand over these lyrics to you and they're going to say this is what the song means, it's so explicit in here, just take it as it is. And that's kind of what this song was even though it has a very cool concept behind it. I wish that the lyrics would have been a little more in depth, but that's just my opinion and I know that not all songs are meant to be that way. Now, Blue Man Group section was pretty interesting in this song and I enjoyed it. Um, I wish they would have been a little more, I don't want to say creative because that sounds a little rude, but it pretty much mimicked the whole main melody line. And usually when um, you see collaborations between artists on an album, they will take that main melody line from the artist um, who made the album essentially, and they'll twist it a little bit. Like, <laughs> this is kind of probably a sillier example, but you have Rockstar by Post Malone, and when, you know, there's features on there where, or on that whole album pretty much, where they take the main melody line of da na 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 da 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 na na and they use those notes, but they twist them into their own pattern and they get real creative with it. I don't know how much of a say Blue Man Group got with their portion of the song, but they just kind of changed the sound, but they didn't quite change the rhythm. And so it, it seemed kind of repetitive and not very, um, I don't know. I just wish they would have gotten a little more creative with their section. Number seven is Bummerland. Bummerland was, you know, one of the earlier singles released for this album. And of course, it reminds me of the beginning of quarantine, not just because of the lyrics, but when this song came out, I listened to it quite a bit. So much to the point where I got very sick of it and did not listen to it for a very long time, pretty much up until OK Orchestra got released or leading up to the release of OK Orchestra, I started listening to Bummerland again. I didn't like Bummerland at first, but that's just because I overplayed it. And when I started listening to it again, it kind of grew on me a little more. The song is really known for its, you know, morphing of the instruments. It really creates the whole identity for the song. And those visuals, the, the circle that you have with the Bummerland album art. And I, I would say it's a very enjoyable song. Um, I personally, <laughs> I'm not a fan of like happy, happy songs, although there are a few exceptions. Um, but say like House of Gold by 21 Pilots is a good example. I love 21 Pilots, but it sounds a little too happy for me. Um, and, and this is kind of what this song really resembles. It's just a little too happy, although the lyrics I wouldn't say are that happy. So overall, it's it's all right. I, I enjoy the song, but it would not be my favorite. Number six on my ranking is My Play. And this was also one of the singles released earlier. And probably one of the reasons why it stood out to me so much was because of that little half step the down, downwards transition when you know you're listening to the verse and the chord progression. Although the chord progression is pretty simple, you still have that little half step um, transition in between the chords, which I thought was pretty original. Um, you don't see that a lot, and they used it twice. And I guess in terms of music theory, that was a pretty bold move, and it sounded really good. Um, so I'll give them that. I, I really did enjoy that about my play. Now, there's a part of the song that I don't like, and I guess, of course, this is how AJR meant it because it's very, uh, it seems very intentional. But the vocals in the song seem very drowned out and kind of buzzy or fuzzy. I don't know what the word is, but the instrumental seems to kind of 
overpower the vocals in some ways, kind of like how uh, the weekend Super Bowl performance went, but it, it doesn't seem too strong for AJR's uh, vocals in this song, which is probably how they intended it because it personally bugs me when songs are like that where the the vocals are purposely lowered down and blended in so quietly with the instrumental so that you want to turn it up louder but then the instrumental is too loud in your ears and so you just have to deal with it. But with a song that emotional, I wish it would have been more raw or more like clean with the vocals and uh, what's a good example? Like turning out, turning out and turning out part two. Um, you have a very clear vocal line, um, and the song's meaning is very deep, and so you can hear the emotion in that. And while you can still hear the emotion in my play, it it doesn't hit as hard because I I don't think the vocals are amplified enough to the point where, or like separated enough from the instrumental where it hits that hard. Number five on my list is three o'clock things. And I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this opinion, but this is just how I feel. And it's that instrumentally, and I guess with the melody and, and everything else, it it's really an awesome song. Um, the chord progression is very cool. It reminds me a lot of Bang, which um, I'll be getting to soon, but those of you who know me know I really like the song Bang. And it's, I, I like songs, I like upbeat songs in minor keys, so it checks off that box for me. But <sighs> three o'clock things, lyrically. It comes across a little immature and a little cringy and a little too... Okay, I, I don't really have a word for it, but I'm just gonna give you some examples. When AJR starts talking about politics, they, they put it out there like it's this big thing that other artists have never done before. Like, it's so bold to come out with your political opinion and say this and this and this. I would say that this used to be the case, probably... I'd say a few years ago before the 2016 presidential election. Obviously, politics have always been a touchy subject, but um, if you have not been living under a rock since 2016, you know that things have gotten a little heated. And for AJR to come out and say like, oh, like we're so bold essentially saying like, you know, how could we, you know, stand up about what we believe in our politics? Like, what are people gonna think of this kind of thing? Um, it, it just didn't really sit right with me because I'd say that's not really where the world is right now. A lot, I don't even want to say a lot, I want to say almost every single musical artist out there has put out their political opinion. Um, if not almost every, well, the majority, the, the vast majority of them. And so I would say this song would have been lyrically um, fitting for maybe 2000, anytime before 2016. Um, but when you have an environment where a lot of artists are putting out their political opinions, putting that out there um, just doesn't seem as bold as they thought they were trying to be, especially with how um, explicit the song is and how they're really... It, it sounds like it's trying to be edgy, but it really isn't. And the song just came off a bit cringy lyrically. And it's not necessarily that I agree or disagree with them politically, but it's more that it comes across um, I guess their way of putting their message out there comes across in a more immature way and I'm not saying that's the way they've always done it. I've seen them put out messages as well as many other artists, um, political messages that come across as very mature. Um, with this song in particular, I don't know if it's the mix of bad language or the fact that it was put in with like an album that instrumentally sounds very Disney themed. Um, it, it just didn't fit right. It, it didn't sound very genuine. It sounded more like, look at me, like I'm trying to be all edgy and out there and it didn't really come across like that. Not trying to hit on them too hard. I will say that Three O'Clock Things instrumentally, the brass in this song reminds me of The Great Gatsby. Never watched the movie, but I've read the book. And so it gives me a lot of vibes of, you know, the Roaring Twenties. If you listen to Roaring Twenties by um, Panic at the Disco, I think that's the name of the song. But it has that really cool, um, brass element where you feel like you're at a party in the 1920s and I really really like that. Also the song is very wordy and it, it makes the song catchy. The melody in the, the verse and also in the chorus too I guess is, is very catchy and so when you have a song that that, that is that wordy um, it's very easy for it to become more attractive to the listener and I wouldn't be surprised if they make a music video for that song especially since they've mentioned themselves it's a fan favorite. Um, I really do like the song. Lyrically, I guess near the end when it gets more political, which I don't have a problem with bands making 
political songs. I mean, I love their song Birthday Party. I thought that was a very well written song. And that touches on a lot of political issues. So I guess it's not politically that bothers me, it's their approach that was a little eh, kind of out there and not the best in my opinion. Number four on my list is Christmas in June. And <laughs> this is where we start getting into the songs that I have, probably have more positive things to say than negative things. So, you know, again, I, I wasn't a big fan of this album. But Christmas in June. I know I'm not a fan of happy songs. I literally just said it. This song gave me a lot of Animal Crossing vibes. This sounds like something that would play at maybe like 4 p.m., 3 p.m. in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Or honestly, it gave me a lot of city folk vibes as well for those of you who have played older versions of Animal Crossing. And the song isn't really as happy as it sounds. Of course, you have that like da 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 that's in the, um, the trailer for OK Orchestra. And that sounds pretty happy on its own. But as soon as you start to take into account the lyrics and how it's more of a reflection on adulthood and the things that you start moving into, and it comes across as a more mature song. And I'll give AJR that. They executed the lyrics off I don't know if that's the right word, but they did it pretty well. I will say for the last song on the album, I expected something that was a little more grand, a little more instrumentally strong. Christmas in June is not that instrumentally strong, and so it didn't give that like grand finish, although vocally you have a lot of layers at the end um, that kind of fit together very well in harmony that close off the album in a pretty nice way, um, obviously before the outro. Also the line, like, are you happy too? Um, I love the melody of that line and because it's said in such a sad kind of way, um, it makes the song kind of stand out in, in the way that it's just, what's the word? You're depressed, but you're happy. I and mean, you just don't know how to feel. It's like you're sitting on top of a mountain watching the sunset and you're like, what's the point of like going on? Like this is just, um, everything seems so, like slow and I don't know beautiful it's just a mix of things I don't even know what I'm saying to be honest I just liked it so that's the word so it has a very solemn feel to it and it it's just nice it's it's nice to listen to it ends the album in a very soothing and calming way um again I would have preferred something a little more instrumentally strong instrumentally strong that goes out with a bang but we're getting to that song so that's why Christmas in June is there Number three in this list is Way Less Sad. You guys know, if you've watched my um, previous videos or live streams, that my favorite key is the key of D. And what do you know? This song's in the key of D. And it reminds me of Don't Throw Out My Legos, which is an incredible song in my opinion, both instrumentally and, um, I don't, I don't say, well, yeah, lyrically, it's pretty great too. Yeah, I like that song a lot. So. Yeah, this song reminded me a lot of Don't Throw Out My Legos. I know I'm not the only one because I made a mashup of the songs and I've seen other people's mashups of the songs and a lot of people have seen those two songs going very well together. So yeah, do like that song a lot. I also really enjoyed the bridge, specifically the chord progression because you start off with an E minor um, and that's pretty clear in the acoustic version or the little, not the version, but the little clip that Jack released uh, was it a day before Way Less Sad's release, or maybe two days before? You could see him playing it on, um, I don't know what instrument. It was either a ukulele or a very small guitar. But he started off playing an E minor. And when you start off in the key of D and you play E minor, like during the start of your bridge, that's gonna be my favorite song. It's a great combination, like the second minor chord in that key. Ooh. Oh man, they, they did great on that song in my opinion. And of course, the instrumental energy of the song reminds me of one of those songs that like, you know, Ryan is putting his hand, one hand on the keyboard and he's like jumping around. He's like, ooh. It's like one of those songs. It's great. Um, it's it's great. I <laughs> I love the song. That's all I have to say, really. It's a good song. Number two, Bang. And those of you who know me know that I love, I know I keep saying that, those of you who know me, you guys know me, but I love songs that are in minor keys that are energetic. And this is a flawless example of this because, well, actually, AJR themselves described the song Bang as more of a villain song. And they wanted to, well, originally they thought about going through with the whole album, album process and following the kind of example and precedent that Bang set, which was more of a villain kind of theme. And then they decided not to do that. So I was like, why not? I mean, I, I don't know. I think I would have liked the album a lot more if they would have gone with that villain kind of theme. But 
maybe next time i don't know just my opinion and again i don't know if the majority feels that way but that's just me just the instrumentals of the song the bounce the chord progression and the slight trap element uh the, like in the percussion it fits together so well so well in fact that it got featured in an apple commercial and it's just a lot of people say the song is overplayed i personally don't see it i i love this song i could listen to it probably forever okay maybe not forever it probably could get overplayed but i've been listening to the song for a while pretty much since it came out since it's the earliest single from this album and i never got tired of it i think the theme is pretty original for the most part and after watching the music video for this song, it's, it gives those vibes, like the red, white, like yellow kind of royalty, uh, throwing money around you. That's what you think of when you listen to Bang and you feel like a villain and you feel like walking down the street and like blasting this song and you're like, yeah, Bang, let's go out with a Bang. And so I, <laughs> this, this song's gotta be number two for me. I really, really do like it. Last but not least, which you guys probably figured out at this point, number one is Adventure Is Out There. Adventure Is Out There is one of the newer songs that came out with the release of the album. And boy, I love this song. It It's so simple, yet it's really not. The melody, the line, I guess, is, is quite simple. Like, dun dun dun, dun rest, like I keep losing my socks, which is funny because they said that this song obviously was called Socks before and was supposed to be released with Neo Theater, didn't make the cut. And then I realized, oh, that's probably why I like the song so much because it was a Neo Theater song and I love Neo Theater. And so then it kind of made me sad because I was like, does this really count as like me loving an OK Orchestra song? Because then, you know, it's it's a Neo Theater song, a Neo Theater, Neo Theater era song. But still, they, they put a lot of work into it during the OKO era and a lot of themes from the album of course are based on OK Orchestra. They kind of redid the whole song anyway, so of course this counts as an OK Orchestra song. The chord progression is grand. You have, you know, it sounds very simple when you're listening to it, but you have very quick changes when you're moving through the melody. Like, and then you have switch. It's it's not just like a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You have it changing pretty irregularly and that it's it's nice. Um, it keeps the song going. It's it's not boring. It doesn't get boring, especially with a very simple melody. They did a great job at keeping the song very interesting. Another thing that I love about this song are the harmonies in the chorus with Jack's part. Um, you know, when he goes a little bit higher up and you can hear just very slightly in, you know, in the background, especially if you're listening with headphones, the higher harmonies. Love those. Those sound amazing. And if you want to hear them a little better, you can listen to the live stream that they did. I believe it was on March 27th, um, except I think they had Ryan's mic turned up a little too high because the harmony was a little louder. It overpowered the melody, but maybe that's how they wanted it. <laughs> I don't know. But man, it just... It sounds like a Disney song, but it's emotional, and I love how- I just love it. I love how it is. It, what else can I say? It's a good song. Overall, Adventures Out There just has a very pleasant timbre. I think that's how you say it. Yeah. It's spelled timbre, but it's said timbre, and that bugs me. But, um, their, their limited use of percussion with that song really allows, you know, gives the space for that build up when they are trying to build up for the more uh, emotional chorus that really pulls at your heart once they hit the higher notes and it just, it goes together so well. And that's all I have to say on that song. It's, it's why it's number one. I love it. <laughs> it's so good. So yeah, those are my 13 um, rankings for all the OK Orchestra songs. I do want to say before you click off this video because I noticed when I look at my viewer retention, um, statistics analytics analytics it always dips when i'm like all right guys thanks so much for watching so hold on just a second because i want to thank you guys seriously like from the bottom of my heart for watching these videos for watching my covers um i did cover all of okay orchestra on the piano and i also had a very very cool meeting a zoom meeting with isaac gordon and nate he you might know him as junamu or hey i'm nate or procrastinate um he has a handful of channels and he's working on some very cool projects and isaac gordon i'm sure you guys know him he does a lot of piano covers of ajr specifically and a lot of other bands and artists as well that i'm sure you guys will enjoy 
And I, anyway, I did a Zoom meeting with them. We talked about this album, and for those of you who have watched that, you guys might have already known some of my opinions on this album. Anyway, I'm rambling, but thank you so much for watching my videos. Genuinely, it's been really cool to see um, just a community kind of come together and in the comment section getting to know you guys, getting to know what songs you like off the album, what songs you don't like off the album, your opinions. It's been really awesome uh, getting to talk to all of you guys and please do not hesitate to leave a comment and you know get to know we can get to know each other you know i'm one of those people that like hesitates to leave comments on some of my favorite youtubers videos because i'm like is this weird like is this gonna get enough likes like what if no one likes it and it just looks weird it doesn't i promise um <laughs> i'd love to get to know you and yeah um i'd love to know what your favorite songs on ok orchestra is yeah ok orchestra are your favorite songs are not is and um I understand that I might get some hate for some of the things I said, especially regarding three o'clock things or world's smallest violin. So I mean, I just want to say those are just my opinions. Obviously I, I'm entitled to mine just as much as you are entitled to yours and I'd love to hear what your thoughts on, what your thoughts are on this album. Man, I'm all over the place. Um, so please let me know in the comments, we can talk about it. If you'd like to stay tuned for more videos, you know, I do videos like this sometimes, but I also do a lot of covers. Yeah, um, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to, or if not, that's totally cool as well. And yeah, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe as always. Please get enough sleep tonight, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Here we go.